welcome guys to the ninth, I think, episode of the Talkaholics yes. podcast. Hi, We're friends. very close to the tenth now. It's very exciting. Yeah, looking forward for the tenth because some exciting stuff are happening in the tenth episode. We got some little things planned for you, and we actually have been looking at the analytics and stuff for YouTube and stuff, and we actually have like growth on every single one of our videos on Ooh. the youtube channel yeah we have like actual views like it no longer oh my god say, like the yay. no views anymore <laughs> that was uh, that was a little heartbreaking like, <laughs> yeah. i remember once i checked our youtube channel and there's just multiple like, no yeah, views it was like three episodes in a row yeah no, no views. views i was just like oh yikes and i know that a lot of people like um have mentioned to me like you know families and friends who <laughs> listen to our stuff. sometimes listen to our podcast yeah um we're like because, say, for example, my brother, he watches um, a lot of podcasts on YouTube. Mm. and But a lot of the podcasts he watches are the ones where they're in the studio. So the video is on them. So yeah. while they're talking, you can see, like, the yes. reactions yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, so he was like, why don't you guys do that? And I'm like, I don't think you understand that we record in Razia's bedroom <laughs> on the floor with one little mic. <laughs> so I don't want people seeing us. Yeah. So, guys, we don't have studio space. As okay, exactly. You know, we're a very... Um, yeah limited i guess limited in our resources so for now this is how it's going to be you know one day yeah. if anybody has studio you know call us up exactly. like you know maybe one day we'll make to. it but yeah, yeah. that'll be great because then you can yeah. see our facial expressions and like yeah. all the things that make us it laugh half the time can, it can actually be a, a like a little bit of a of a show, like mm-hmm. a variety show exactly even. and i'd love to think about designing a set and that kind of stuff so. but for now you're just gonna have to see our little graphic that we keep up on yeah <laughs> on the channel yeah um but still our voices are great so yeah you, you know. should still be watching exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's Iman's little disciplinary talk for you for the day but anyways guys we're gonna get right into it we have to get better at making shorter intros but this yeah. is i think uh, as concise as we can get for now but uh yeah i hope enjoy. you guys enjoy the video yeah. or sorry no podcast. episode podcast sorry. bye <laughs> It was good. It was like, (sighs) (laughs) you know, like for long weekends, especially if you're working full time, you're like long weekend, I can relax. But then everybody wants to do something during the long weekend. So then you and then it gets packed up and then you're like, oh, exactly. So for me, every summer I take my cousins out to Wonderland and this has been going on for like, I want to say like four years now. That's cute. Um, Because, yeah. We don't, like, we don't see each other too often. We see each other, like, from time to time. But, like, they're my younger cousins, so I'm, so I'm like, we should do something together, right? Yeah. Um, especially now that we're getting older. I feel like, for me, I don't have a lot of older cousins. I only have, like, two. Okay. So, <laughs> I feel like, for me, when I was growing up, there was, like, a big, lar- like, distance. So, when mm. I was growing up, mm. we weren't as close as mm. to, like, now with, mm. we're older, so mm. it's fine. Mm. But, like, I didn't want the same thing to happen to my younger cousins. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, um... I was like, yeah, we should get together. Like a you tradition. know, traditional That's thing. That's cute. Oh, was so, it busy that day? I'm sure that weekend wasn't it. Like, it was. Gross a fr- and I went hot? on the Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was hot though. Yeah. yeah. I went on the Friday, so that was what the 31st of mm. August. Um, it was hot, but it was okay. Like it was busy for sure, but mm. whatever. It was expected. It's Wonderland. Mm. Oh, for okay. I'm pretty sure all of our viewers are from Toronto. I'm not even gonna try to explain yeah. it. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> I think they have Google. They can find out. <laughs> Um, I said viewers again. Listeners, we are not being viewed. Okay, so we went to Wonderland, which was great. We spent the whole day there. And then that was a Friday. Saturday, I came home. What did I do? I wish I could tell you. I don't know. I think I just, re- I think I that was a chill day because what I was supposed to come home Friday night, but then, um, and, like, because I parked my my car at my aunt's place, and then mm. um, they took us to Wonderland, so I wouldn't have to pay for parking. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I came back to get my car, they all hatched this, like, evil plan to make us stay in oh. my aunt lives in Newmarket. Okay, yeah. Um, so they, my mom and everybody, they all hatched this evil plan for us to all stay in Newmarket because mom was like, it's too late to drive. You're going to be driving on the highway. Mom has this thing about driving on the highway at nighttime. Yeah. And I'm like, it's fine. It's just, I've done it before. But yeah. anyway, so yeah. they made us stay in Newmarket for the <laughs> night, which I was not prepared for. None of my cousins were prepared for. Yeah. 
but regardless, we did it. Yeah. And then we kind of spent uh, like half the day uh, of Saturday in Newmarket, and mm. then I had to drive home. Mm. I drove all my cousins home. Oh my god. And I drove home, and then finally I was like relieved from home. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday we had a family barbecue mm. or a picnic kind of thing, so we went to the park. We spent the day there, mm. which was nice. Um, and then Monday, Monday. What did I do on Monday? I don't think I did anything on Monday. Yeah, I mean, even I'm Which like, was the actual holiday. The holiday itself, yeah. We didn't even do a, a single barbecue this summer. Like, my family's big on barbecues. Yeah. And when we do barbecues, it's, like, not just chicken and whatever. Like, we have hot dogs. Yeah, and yeah, We have yeah. salad, and we have, like, burgers. Yeah, we bring and, out, like, like, real food. Yeah, it's, these. like, the whole... Yeah. yeah, like, you're eating from morning till night, and they were spent the whole day outside. Yep. So it's a real event, but this year we, I don't know, we, like one thing happened after another and we didn't have time. So this weekend though was still busy. I was saying before I went on the Friday night right after work to a wedding and that was hectic because I couldn't even leave work on time and I was supposed to wear sorry and then that canceled because oh. like I have to get someone like to do it for me. I'm like way too like i can't yeah and i'm tall and i'm tall i think we talked about this before yeah about you with sorry yeah and i'm like way too tall for like majority of like normal sorry wow, that are out that's there that's like so. opposite the problem i have yeah <laughs> so everything's I, always too long for me oh, but it's easier to fix than it is if you're too that's tall true, that's true. so i always have to get it done and there's one lady who gets it done for me properly and she also wasn't available so it was oh. like a lot of things um i ended up just wearing a shell wear but i was happy with it at the end um, and then went there, basically came home at like 2 p.m. or something, 2 a.m., sorry. And then um, the next day, had to wake up early to go to Fan Expo with a bunch of friends. Oh, yeah. But And I've been there for like, I think it's my fourth or fifth time there. I've never been to Fan Expo. Oh, we should go. You would <clears> love it. It happens, the thing is with Fan Expo, and for some reason here, there's technically two types that happen within the year. Okay. So in August, September, there is um, a Fan Expo, and then midway through the year it's called T- toronto comic-con but it's the oh. exact same format an exact same so area. fan expo like what does it what happens <laughs> so it's it's just like san diego comic-con of like people dress up they're like shit so of is it is it okay so it's basically all like animated yeah it's like but it's it's fan based so that you'll see everything from yes anime and like superheroes obviously yeah but then you'll see like like big TV shows at the time and like fans and guests in and around that stuff and booths for that stuff. Oh, okay. And then see. you'll see um, like an artist alley for like comic artists or like up and coming indie artists oh. and a whole section just for gaming. Like Nintendo was there, Xbox was there, PS3 was there, PS3, oh, PS3, PS4. PlayStation, whatever. Yeah, they were there um, and like a bunch of other side uh, indie gaming places or oh. companies. So like it covers a lot. So yeah. how do they like pick who comes to the to the event yeah like is it based on like who pays oh yeah so yeah basically they i'm sure for guests specifically like celebrity guests i'm sure they scout out people because um i mean not a lot of their guests are usually huge celebrities like a lot of them are voice animators actually so you'll see a lot of the people who do voices for like ash and pikachu and like all those Uh, people like the dragon ball z original voice actors that's cool um this year and i'm so sad because i missed it but jason momoa was there and I wasn't there at the same time he was, so I was upset. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the first time I went, my first fan expo, I went because Bautista was there. Oh. Going back to WWE again. Yeah. But he, he, this is, he was there because that was the, during the first, um, oh my god, Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Oh. So yeah, he was there for that. And I actually attended, like, a side panel for that, which he just led. There was, like, no MC for it, which was weird. Oh. Like, it was just him at the front of a room and a bunch of chairs. Like, yeah. Just, like, it was a huge, like, a gym size kind of room. And he just stood at the front and was just answering questions. There was, like, no agenda for this. Oh, which I he thought, was just there by himself? Yeah, you know, usually how there's an yeah, MC, yeah, yeah. Like, interviewer, yeah. and they go back and forth. Yeah. And, you know, tell us about how it was, you yeah. know, on the set or whatever. Like, he was just answering questions. So I walked in and I was like... I don't know if I can take the mic right now. <laughs> I'm like, this is like so, but he's great. He's really, really funny. Like he wasn't awkward at all. I was like, I was like really, um, I, I guess impressed by that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this year it was only Jason Momoa from what I can remember. Um, in previous years, like Hulk Hogan was there. Um, the guy from Chris Emmel, I think his name is from Green Arrow. <clears throat> Sorry, from Green Arrow. Oh, okay. He was there before. I don't watch that. Karen Gillan was there this year. You know, did you watch, like, the Jumanji reboot? 
The one with The Rock. The Rock, yeah. yeah the I watched girl it like two it. times. I watched it like three or four yeah, times. Yeah, I love that movie. It was good. It was good. <laughs> the girl in it, the redhead. She was Oh, there. cool. Yeah, what she, is she in, in like She's in I don't know the current Doctor Who. Um she was in previous Doctor Who seasons. Oh. Yeah. So because of that mainly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh but my god, really I cool. love sorry to cut you off, but I love Jumanji. No, that no, that no. movie was hilarious. Yeah. I don't care. Some people didn't think it was funny. I was like, no. how it can was, you not think it's th- it was actually a good my movie. favorite character is Kevin the Hart? no <laughs> even though i love kevin hart to my to oh, that jack movie? black Yay! oh my god jack black did a phenomenal so job <laughs> i love jack black he's so underrated i love jack Except black that role was like kung it, fu panda it, come on oh my god yes actually and i actually like school of rock too school of rock yeah. like that was an amazing i could watch that over and over yeah. again that movie it was, was hilarious YTV, like every it's always on white tv yeah they're trying making a reboot of it it's not good the broadway one. Oh, it's actually no no, no they're trying to make a new movie they really? made a new i'm pretty sure they made a new movie but like you know like those tv movies are yeah. disgusting and with jack black it's not the same humor yeah, yeah it's not good and they're you know what also they're making a new movie of mm. freaky friday with who i don't know it's like a disney reboot uh, mm. it's bad it's cringy i saw uh, a commercial for it and i was like yeah leave it alone yeah Lindsay lohan leave her alone yikes yeah no and i saw it just on top of that i like i'm not i don't know if it was like a fan-made thing or whatever but i think they're trying to make him possible into like some tv oh, show no, no. but it's weird because like you know like they casted like a young girl for it like she's yeah. probably like 12 to 15 but kim possible like she kind of looks older if but kim possible was in high school okay but but she looks older yeah yes, but the person i agree that ca- it was weird I don't know. It wasn't about No. It. Kim Possible is meant to be animated. Don't make yeah. it real. Well, they're going to do that for every <sighs> show. Like, they're gonna, I want to see them do Johnny Bravo. Like, let's just see, <laughs> <laughs> let's just see that in real life. I miss... Honestly, like, <laughs> the other day... Wow, I, I really cut you off. I'm sorry. No, no. Let's just go. But, like, the other day, I was, wa- I was like, scrolling through my TV, whatever. And I'm like, there is nothing on TV anymore. Yeah. I remember when we were younger... TV was amazing. Saturday morning, we had, Sunday mornings. Yeah. We had so many. We had, yeah. first of all, Teletoon was popping. Yeah. Teletoon now is weird. Yeah. Um, and then Family cartoon Channel. Oh, yeah, man. Cartoon. On Family Channel, yeah. we had every, we had Proud Family, we had That's So Raven, we had Sweet Life, yeah. we had Kim Possible, yeah. we had The Weekenders, we had Recess. Yeah. Like, all those amazing shows. Exactly. And now kids watch, like. Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom was uh, amazing. All Fillmore. All grown Do you remember up. Fillmore? Fillmore of the future? That no, one? no, oh, no. That's Phil, that's of, the Phil of the future. But Phil of the future was great. <laughs> Fillmore is the one with, he's a hall monitor, but he's like a detective. Oh, I don't know. Let me you don't remember it. Fillmore? I have to see it. I have to see he's it. He's like the a little black not. kid. Fillmore. This was on ABC or what? No, it was on FI. FIL. Oh. It's clearly I, I'm pretty sure. It was on, it was, I'm pretty sure it was a Disney show, but it, they played it on, um, this one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, anyway, I, I love that skateboard. show. He yeah. was like a hall monitor, but he cracked real cases. <laughs> like, I was like, it was such a good show. Oh, Disney, okay. That's cool. Oh. No, yeah. There's a lot they of They made shows. such good stuff. Yeah, My Life as a Teenage Oops. Robot. I, this happens at least once every yeah. episode. Yeah. I forget to turn my phone on silent. I'm it, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I forget to do my homework before podcasts and your phone. Is <laughs> Those two things don't happen. It's is it really a, an episode of yeah, our podcast? Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, no, uh, but like, and I like the fact that I don't know why it doesn't like this. It, it's changed, but yeah. have you noticed that what the shows we watched growing up had actual messages to them? Like, do you remember that episode of That's or Even where she went under, where they went undercover? Almost every single in, episode. There was yeah, a but lesson. when they went undercover in um the clothing store that she loved. Yeah, and she because she didn't get the job because she was black. Yeah, remember she had a vision. Yeah, and the yeah, ladies yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. She didn't yeah. get the job because she was black. Yeah. And I was like, as a kid, I was like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they went undercover <laughs> and then um exposed her as a racist, which obviously wouldn't happen in real life. But yeah. like the fact that they actually showed that in a TV show yeah. to mo- like yeah. millions of kids. No, Are you so kidding me? Kids. Yeah. Hmm. And then there was um uh what's her face um the proud family the mm-hmm. episode where Penny there was that episode where um they had a swap you swap families. Okay. So she swapped with a Muslim girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was during Ramadan. Oh, so Penny that. went to a family that was, and they were fasting. Mm. So she learned about fasting, and she went to the mosque with them. Yeah. And all this stuff. That's cool. That's awesome. I was like, where are all these woke stuff yeah, now? Exactly. All we now all the shows now are dumb. Like no, I've seen people like, just getting hit no. in the head and falling. And, and it's, it's like, not funny anymore. It's like 
okay, because a lot of the shows kind of take like the same theme of like, okay, because I only know these things because my, my nieces are always watching yeah. like the newer stuff out right now. Yeah. There's like one with like a superhero like ladybug thing. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Fucking annoying. <laughs> like, <laughs> like she's uh, not really a ladybug. She just dresses like a ladybug. Yeah, but it's also like every episode, I don't care because like it's it's the same thing of like all their lessons are about friendship and being together and uh-huh. like, oh, it's just like so like it's so sweet tooth like there's too too much sugar yeah. over everything like it's, it's just not, like it's yeah. just like you know there's no substance exactly. there's no substance exactly there was like always some like with 90s like uh television or like cartoons there was always some issue with like parents or like you know dealing with bullying at yeah school or like it was like kind of very varied and especially with shows that are specific to people of color like, mm-hmm. stuff, like the ones you just mentioned proud family with the with the song with destiny's child isn't it yeah oh, destiny's child sa- like you know the show's already good because destiny's child Did sang the, the intro song, song. <laughs> when I, I you trust me i blew my mind when oh. i first heard that song because i recognized yeah it, you know the, the when the same voice. but i was like nah that's not destiny's child and then after that i found out it was destiny's child and i was like oh my god no when i heard it i was like yes yeah. Oh my god! Like it was revolutionary for me. I really don't know what happened. I want to know what happened because why did people? Is it is it because kids nowadays are just stupid and they don't? Yeah, all they want is like passive entertainment. Yeah, I think that is it. Because think about like their. So what was uh, what was different about us? No, because we didn't have YouTube. Like oh, true. I think think it's that. Thank God for that. (laughs) Yeah, and if you see like YouTube makes a lot of their money now based on like really quick dumb videos for kids that mm-hmm. are just like that you know mommy finger song played over four billion different times again you the know what the, the no, mommy I, finger song? no it's like okay well i'll show you later but okay. it's like a trend that like it's just like this mind-numbing lullaby basically oh. that plays over and over and over it's again with, like weird and animation in the back and it has like a like 22 plus million views of like kids just watching that because their kid like parents will just give that to them on their phones if they're being naughty at a restaurant like, or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Just... And they just zone out. Yeah, so if you have something like YouTube that is, like, just mindless content, yeah. they're not going to care about, let me go watch something, you know, of substance on Nickelodeon or Cartoon yeah. Network. Cartoon Network, for me, was, was like, Teen Titans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, oh, I was just talking about to Ms. Bob about this yesterday, but the one with um, Foster, that one, the Foster Friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. and the Blue Dude. Yeah, yeah, oh, that was such a, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Imaginary Home for Fo- Foster Friends. I remember, but I don't you know, know what you're talking about. Talk about. <laughs> that, that was one. such a great show. Yeah, so much or shows that clone that. show. What was it? Carl, Carl, Carl Squared. Carl Squared. It? Do you remember Carl Squared? I don't think so, no. He, like, gets cloned and... No. You don't remember that show? I just... No. Okay, well, then there's so many. I'm like, I don't... Hold on. Carl no, but Squared. honestly, I'm actually very, very, very grateful or for the fact like, that we sorry. grew up in a time where the internet was... And, yeah, the internet in general was just still quite new yeah like we i when i was a child like when i was really young we were still on dial-up internet okay like it was no. yeah you don't remember that cross guard no, oh I wow um but yeah like i'm very grateful for that because i was able to like if we wanted to entertain ourselves we had to you know find a way to do that yeah. we would just go outside yeah play with the for our friends that are on in our neighborhood yeah. you know make up adventures for ourselves yeah, exactly. rather than sit at home yeah. and like I we could have sat at home and watched tv but that wasn't yeah you know that wasn't what it was we yeah. wanted to go outside we wanted to be active kids exactly. don't want to just sit stationary the entire day no for sure and i think like just going back to the fact that we're talking about cartoons specifically like this is like excluding all the other amazing tv shows mm-hmm. that weren't in animated form yeah but i think the great thing about how the cartoons that we were exposed to is like the variety of different like art styles not just like the themes and the stories and stuff but like for me that brought in my mind as a, like a creative person like i love looking at very et- retro cartoons like mm-hmm. dexter's lab yeah, yeah. Like dexter's lab up, yeah and the way like, like the... dexter's lab uh was okay well i can't really say shot because it's animated <laughs> yeah but like the way the camera yeah, 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 yeah kind yeah, of yeah, focuses yeah. on the different people and like they're really close-ups yeah, yeah. and like the Spongebob way it's cut thing, yeah. yeah of like that you know there's always one shot of like really close to someone's face and it's like gross in detail yeah like, that's like <laughs> ren and stimpy does the same kind of thing like they're like that stuff for me was were huge influences growing up even do you remember being ian do you remember that being on, ian, being he's a, ian. Uh, he that was on ytv specifically being ian it, it sounds so familiar it kind of looks like Yvonne of the yukon like in in he the show was about like how he views every kind of part of his life in oh, a movie. Oh, because he, he liked to, yeah, to vid- like record weird, everything. Yeah, 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 I remember that show. I, I remember that, that show. show. I love that show because, like, that was such a cool spin on, like, that because he saw everything as a movie scene or TV show, yeah. the whole show took was up like, that. Yeah. So they were able to do a lot of cool creative things. I love that yeah. show. 
It's that kind of like, not. yeah, it's kind of sad to see, like, I work with kids. Talk zone, sorry. I'm just, like, thinking of more. <laughs> I work with kids, so, like, now, obviously. Yeah. So, I see where their minds are at in terms of, um, like, knowledge, general basic knowledge sometimes, mm-hmm. or, like, it surprised me, like, last year I worked with, um, six, grade six to eights, mm. and some of these, this one kid was in grade seven and didn't know how to spell, like, a really basic word. Okay. And it's like, because a lot of their work now, they do online. They mm. do it on yeah, Google yeah, Docs, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and they exactly. have spell check. Yeah, and same thing with mine. You know what I yeah. mean? So, like, a lot of these basic things, how to form a sentence, how mm. to, like, you know, continue a storyline. The stuff we learned in, like, grade three, grade four, they're and missing. they're still struggling yeah. with right now. Yeah, I know. Um, and just, like, the things they find interesting and funny. Um, like, I remember remember last year that whole thing with Logan Paul in the in yeah, Japan? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so a lot of the kids that the I Logan worked Paul with followers, are yeah. Logan Paul followers. Yeah. And the fact, uh, just, uh, it disgusts me because that guy is disgusting. But, yes, like, yeah. so the fact that even though all this stuff came out, like, they still loved him so much. And, like, why yeah. are you so invested in a person online yeah I know. that's my that's my concern you know yeah, what i mean I know. there's a lot of personalities online that i'm like yeah this is where 95 percent of their like attention it's goes disgusting to, or like Fortnite dances like and like stuff. at the end of the day logan paul's still wealthy he's still making yeah, it he's still able to make content on youtube which is like yeah yeah that's its own sub topic but, oh man yeah i'm not gonna we're gonna stray away from this topic because yeah. we're gonna get too heated you know, yeah. <laughs> but no it yeah i miss 90s shows for that reason but because of my nieces and stuff yeah i have like i i'm always a person to reintroduce them into shows i like card captors did you ever watch card captors no it's a, kind of an anime show but it used to um. be on um it used to be on like a you know how ytv like before after like a certain time after seven or something they would play like bionics i think it's called or something oh they used to play anime shows just at that time oh they used to, yeah, they used yeah. To have like naruto segment. and stuff like that yeah yeah, they used yeah, to yeah. Have Inuyasha, stuff like that oh so, yeah inuyasha oh yeah. my god i remember that so i'm like slowly introducing them to stuff so they're they're, <laughs> they're kind of seeing now too they're like oh the stuff now like besides adventure time and so i think adventure time is like one of the better recent yeah um, that's cartoon true. shows but other than like a few exceptions here and there like they're like oh yeah why is stuff now so shit and i'm like yeah you see what i mean <laughs> <laughs> i think it helps when you have like older siblings or cousins oh yeah to you know get their I mean? perspective like how yeah. else are they supposed to know anywho but yeah fan expo <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah sorry <laughs> no no it's okay fan expo was great i go there every year honestly just because like the the feeling and the hype around just being excited about like nerdy shit is nice <laughs> and like see, seeing people's cosplays like people spend so much oh, yeah. time and it's, investment it's crazy and they like embody the character when they're there and i love that stuff. that's such a talent it is and a lot of time and money like just yeah. to kind of for one day to show up but other than that yeah i think the rest of the other days was like me catching up on stuff for other like home chores and stuff like i Otherwise, it was good, though. Like, I, I need more long weekends. So, oh, but, who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, oh, I I'm, started, like, this week was my um, first week of, like, full 9.30 to 5.30 full-time kind oh, of work. Yeah? Like, because b- before I was working full-time hours, but it was, like, um, midday to, like, evening and then weekends. Oh, so you flipped up. So, like, oh. now I'm working, like, regular hours. But it's such a struggle. Yeah, like, getting, uh, up morning, getting up in the morning oh, yeah. and, like, solid, like, eight hours. Mm coming back home, sleeping, and then waking up to do it all again. Mm. <laughs> I need more long weekends. It's a struggle. Oh, man. Okay. We, we're going to talk about Mac Miller just because I only found out literally as yeah. soon as you sat down this morning that he had passed away. And I think you said he was 26. Six. 26, um, yeah. And passed away because of a drug overdose. Yeah. And it's kind of nuts. Like, uh, m- the first thing that came to my head, even as soon as you said it, and I, like, even wrote it down, that like that remind me so much is just of Avicii like how mm-hmm. he how he passed away I think it was drug related for him but I know he also had like um, um, like mental health issues like he was really stressing himself out with the work that he was doing mm-hmm. so I mean uh, yeah it kind of sucks like it, it, I feel like it's just a lot of um, young, a lot of rappers yeah. a lot of ra- young rappers who have passed away recently too and then. I don't know, like, if I was a young person growing up with, with kind of looking up to these rappers, like, this is kind of past yeah, it's who sad. I was like, looking up to, but... Yeah, I mean, I even found out late, like, it happened yesterday, and I didn't find out till I got home, because I wasn't, I was so busy at work, so I came home and I found, I saw it, and I was like, wait, what? First I thought it was fake. Mm, yeah. Like, you know how some people just say someone died yeah, and yeah. it's not real? It's like tablet. And then I went online, and, I, like, there's, like, articles and all this stuff, and I was on Twitter and stuff, and there was a lot of people were upset because they kept referring 
to him as Ariana Grande's ex-boyfriend. Mm. And mm. people are like, he wasn't just Ariana yeah. Grande's yeah. ex-boyfriend. And it's like, so funny because you, know, you just said an article that just said that. And like that's like the yeah. first line. Like, but, they were like, kind of like, why are you connecting him to someone? Like, that's not all he was. And then yeah. there was also a lot of people who... Um, because he released an album, right? At the same time as Astro World. Okay. Which is Travis Scott's album. I'm pretty sure that they released it around the same time, if I'm, if I'm correct. I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, and what they people were saying were like, when it came out, people were like, oh, who listens to Mac Miller anymore? Like, why would he even try to drop it at the same time? Kind of yeah. stuff like that. And then they would go to, you know, listen to Travis Scott's music. And so some people were saying like, and then now that, that. that he's passed yeah. away, people are like, oh, I always loved Mac Miller. Nah, 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 nah. So people are like, why are you so fake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, behind yeah. your screens, you, you say whatever you want about people and you don't know, yeah. you know, how it could have affected them and... Yeah, exactly. It's just at the end of the day, it's just it's sad. Yeah, like, it's, it's I mean, a young person that yeah. passed away, and but yeah, a difference from us. Like that's like, crazy. Yeah, and yeah, it may have been a drug overdose, but we really don't know, like his life story. We don't know what yeah. he was going through, why mm-hmm. he was taking drugs. Like mm-hmm. we don't know anything. So yeah. I mean, ultimately, addiction of any sort is linked usually to um, some sort of mouth, mental health. Sorry like a disorder or maybe he might have been just struggling with depression yeah. of some some kind so i mean i think yeah probably i know he's been struggling with his career kind of in the past few years in terms of like get, getting the hype and uh, attention he used to when he first started so i mean i think that probably all took a toll on him but regardless again like i just feel like there's been so many recent artists and stuff um that have in their own way taken their own lives or have been um Get been caught up with addiction so it sucks i mean yeah that's uh it's it sucks it sucks that it's almost like regular now and like yeah like it's not we're not phased like no yeah, yeah. like if if, an, if a celebrity dies a lot of people are automatically think it's something drug related yeah which is just sad drug or suicide yeah it's like the yeah it's like a guessing game which is like kind of like it's kind of sick if you think yeah. about it but anywho on another not so fun uh topic there is that new New York Times article that came out uh, regarding Trump, and I think I just like um, let you might know of it today. I think I heard about it either yesterday or the day before yesterday, of like this expose in New York Times by someone who uh, claims to be within the Trump administration, hasn't named themselves, they're mm-hmm. anonymous completely, and um, that they basically said that they're kind of working with other people within the administration to push back um, and to base are basically biding their time until they can get him out of office and are not doing things within the inside which is crazy and that, yeah <laughs> again i feel like everything that happens within this administration everything that has come out since he's been in power that it feels like just one big soap opera one big like it feels like a big joke in like you know world of like yeah of course there's gonna be like a, another order within you know it's like handmaid still like it's like another yeah. order within the bigger construct yeah like, so it's it's just weird i know he's um he's jeff sessions is the guy who is responsible for national security i think and he's like basically asking him to help investigate on something that isn't essentially a crime but it's you know so he's taking advantage of his power but i mean like half the time i hear things about trump i'm just not surprised because it's like we let a five-year-old yeah, I mean, when I say we, I meant America. America yeah. led a five-year-old exactly. we into no their office. Yeah, we are Canadians. We, we are yeah. not a part of this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, even if we were, man, no way in hell that that he would have gotten one of our. Yeah, out, no. Right? But it's yeah, it's like a it's like a child. Yeah. A child yeah. is in the White House right now and is controlling the country. Yeah. And it's sad. Yeah. You know what? What made me laugh too is that he there was like some he was at some rally making a speech as soon as he heard heard about the yeah. New York Times thing. Obviously, you know how it always looks, right? Yeah. He met a podium. There's a shit ton of people behind him. Yeah. And he couldn't even say the word anonymous. He an anonymous <laughs> person. Like he tried, and I was like, that was just like I'm sure CTV put that <laughs> as part of that his, their role on purpose. Like he really couldn't say it. Maybe laugh. But, yeah. yeah. But and, yeah, there was also the book that came out by Bob. Or has it come out already? I'm not really sure, but I know that it's already been covered by a lot of news outlets, CNN being one of them. Um, and it's called Fear, Trump in the White House, and it's by Bob Woodward, who's also um, the author that wrote the book that exposed Watergate. Mm. So 
he is Bob Woodward is a very um, respected individual, like a respected author. He's won two Pulitzer prizes. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I think wow. it was two. So he's very respected, and apparently he went and he spoke to individuals in the White House who mm-hmm. were within the White House, and they gave him. They had interviews with him, and mm. they said that even a, a lot of these people allowed him to record these interviews. Oh, so it's not like you can say it's fake. Mm. Um, so a lot of the things in the book basically talk exactly what you're saying, how yeah. um, people in the office are scared of Trump and don't, like, they're trying to, and they're kind of trying to save the world from Trump, basically. basically what yeah, they, that's yeah, what they're trying to do. Yeah. It's like a child, again. Yeah, exactly. So, um... I heard things too about like people within his administration hiding documents from him. Because yeah, they stole a letter it. off his desk or because something. Because you'll forget it. They said like, <laughs> I, which I'm like, oh my god. It's like you, it's like babysitting and discipline. And then child. when Trump like heard about the book and stuff, he came out and he was like, he basically, as always on Twitter, <laughs> yeah, was basically saying it's all fake and stuff. And he he's like, oh, no one even told me that. Because apparently Bob Woodward wanted to speak to Trump and, like, interview him as well for the yeah. book. And Trump was like, no one told me that you wanted to speak people. to me. Of course. Um, but then there's a recording of them on the phone, Trump and, and Bob Woodward. Oh, my God. Oh, no. And it says, and he's talking to him, and he's like, Trump basically says, like, no one told me that um, you wanted to speak to me. And then Woodward goes, oh, no, um, I spoke to so-and-so, and he said that he was going to talk to you. And then Trump goes, Oh well, yeah. He met. He <laughs> mentioned it in passing, but I didn't know. Like, I didn't think it was a real thing, kind yeah. of thing. Oh my so God. he knew. He yeah, just he absolutely the knew. way he always contradicts himself, and it, it yeah. really. I just I don't understand it. Yeah. I, well, I mean, that's that's been his like style to leading his his party since his campaign of like I'm gonna promise this, but say this in you know another entire different um, mode of interaction the next time I speak in public. So and I mean Twitter is like. His, is that tracked history of exactly that. But um, one thing I wanted to mention really quickly, and again, I love the way CTV and like Canadian media depicts all the stuff that's been happening within yeah. the Trump world because I feel like they do pick certain clips and stuff just oh, of to course. show how stupid of course. Is. They, lo- <laughs> they love that. So there was like... Um, so when the first... Going back to the New York Times article, when that first came out, there was a lot of people, obviously journalists are going to like every single person within their administration to say, were you the one to write this? And Mm. like a lot of people are saying, no, 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 no. Yeah. There's a lot of clips around that stuff. So they just showed one after the other. And then there's the last one of, I don't don't remember his name. He's not like a famous person, a part of his administration. Yeah. Basically, he's like. I'm not the one that, who wrote it, but it I like it really could have been any one of us, and like that's where the clip ends. Oh, and I'm like really like basically he said like all oh, these are shared opinions. Like this this oh. article is everyone's everybody's thinking thought this. about him, yeah. and I'm like, well, like what? Like he just can't get away. Like <laughs> I, sometimes I have to remind myself like, this is the president we're talking yeah. about. Like. It's crazy. We, like, how is this happening? It was, <laughs> oh my god! So it was that it made me laugh a lot. Actually. <laughs> The, the fact that this is happening in office and there, people are wanting to impeach Trump, right? Yeah. I asked my brother the other day, I was like, how long has been Trump in, been in office now? And he's like, one and a half years. I was like, yeah. I thought it was three. Like, I you truly, was, really? I truly thought, like, we were almost done with him. No, we got, like, <laughs> no, we still got, like, two and a half more years. We got two and a half more years, potentially four more after that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, if, okay, if Donald Trump gets reelected. Okay, come on, look at George Bush. Like, if there's chances. Okay, but George Bush was, like, a little smarter than Donald Trump, okay? If Donald Trump gets reelected, <laughs> it's their own fault. Like, America, <laughs> that's your, that's, up, that's on you. Hey, you play Honey yourself. boo boo, like, that's you. Okay? <laughs> but the thing is, if Trump gets impeached, I was thinking about this, like, and I spoke to this with my, about this with my brother. Yeah. Is like, maybe we should let it, I mean, we, as if we have any control. Hmm. Um, but, like, I don't know if, I if it would be a good idea to impeach Trump just because if they impeach, a, if he gets impeached, the person that gets the presidency is his vice president. That's Mike Pence. Mm. And I feel like Mike Pence is um, definitely more intelligent, mm. I think, than Trump. And I don't, I think he's a little evil. So yeah. I don't know yeah. what's better for, for the world. For the right world. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm holding out on hope that, like, I think, yes, we've heard, like, people within his administration, like we've said, are working against him, but... I kind of still just want Melania to be the one to, like, <laughs> just be the reason for the shit show. Like, I want her to just put her foot down. Because I know she's getting paid. Like, I'm sure there's things in, like, her their prenup that, like, yeah, if you get 100%. I don't divorced, know. like, like she... these things that you lose. Yeah. Like, I'm sure she's being put in a place of fear. But I just want him, her to, like, get a divorce, stand up to him. Because yeah. he, cause Trump's the type of guy to, like, 
he would be embarrassed by that shit. Like, he's the one who cares about manliness and, oh, you know, I've got yeah. this beautiful woman beside, you know, trophy wife type. Yeah. Shit. Like, I want her to be the one to just leave him and then just run for office right after. <laughs> just because but, we had the opportunity but, yeah. to have a woman president and then for her to be the one to take that away from him, I would That would I be just, funny. I just... But just the reason why I think it wouldn't happen is if you look back at Melania's... Um, uh, what's it called? Like public appearances where she actually had to speak to an audience. Mm. Um, uh, the stealing Obama, Michelle she, Obama. Yeah, she basically yeah. stole Michelle Obama's speech like twice. Yeah, yeah. And then hasn't really said anything intelligent after that. So, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I can't I see her but, running for office. But for me, like, I don't know why, but I, I think it's because, like, every time I see her in, like, in public with him, like, she just seems so dead. Like, her yeah. face is like, she's just not happy to be there. Um, and I kind of think that. You know, that whole Michelle Obama thing. I think that, like, there's obviously a PR team and a communication team behind her. Oh, of course. giving yeah, her yeah, direction yeah, yeah. on what to do, right? Of course. She's not part of this world. She I, is not used to the, like, you know, thinking politically about yeah. every decision you make. So, I kind of think that she's been controlled in a lot of ways, right? And, 100%. 100%. Oh, and sorry, just just on another note, cause, but this is related. But did you hear about that whole affair that he was having with someone within the White House who was, like, a maid? What? And, like, they have a leg- a leg- illegitimate child and everything no yeah i heard about that through oh, a co-worker. yeah and the, see the thing is is that even stuff like that's not even getting enough media hype because yeah. it's expected like at this point it's like of course he does like the stormy daniels thing okay yeah, yeah. Sure. so anyways that's happened but anyways let's uh, steer away from trump and <laughs> talk about other things that are happening in the u.s of a the u.s of a um so did you see the colin Kaepernick um Nike ad yeah I did see the ad and the black and white one right with this just his face yeah yeah I did see it and I saw um again coverage on it I think that they did an interview with Tiger Woods I think about it because he's also like a big you know sports person yeah yeah. is with Nike in terms of a brand and stuff and he they asked him about like comments first of all why does opinion what does his opinion matter at this point I don't know why but they asked him like what do you think of them highlighting Kaepernick and basically he gave his like full support um but basically I guess for the people who aren't aware of who this specific sportsman is yeah is and correct me if I'm wrong but he's the one who is a part of a he's a football player Mm -hmm. who is the one who kneeled I think during the uh American anthem and this obviously caused a shit storm um not with the mainstream audience, I don't think, but with Trump, I remember sent out a tweet about like you know that this is awful, this is such a disgrace. How dare he? I'm yeah, and they, sure they other Republicans were offended. They made it. Did they make it a rule, or they tried to make it a rule that you're not allowed to kneel during the anthem? Yeah, there's like yeah, and like he was fact, taken. Yeah. He couldn't play for a little right. He there's something around that. Yeah, um, but basically he yeah he kneeled during the anthem because he was protesting. Um, yeah. And uh, this Nike ad says, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Mm. And it's just his face in black and white. Yeah. Um, and he's, ever since that, he's become, like, a pretty big activist in terms of, um, like... He's a bit of an icon. Yeah, yeah he's a bit of an icon. And it's definitely for, like, the the Black Lives Matter movement and everything. Like, he's become a pretty well-known activist. Um, so now... Nike comes out with this ad, and mm. everybody's like, okay, well, there's half of us that are like, yes, love it. And then there's white America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or like, yeah, um, who are protesting. I have it. huge quotations, guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> protesting against this Big ad protest. by burning. Have you heard of this? They're yeah. burning their shoes, their Nikes. What? And I remember seeing a meme on Twitter. What, what is where this, it like, was like witchcraft? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I saw a meme on Twitter, and it was like, um, Nike watching white people burn their shoes after buying them. <laughs> oh <laughs> and it's just like God. the smiling, creepy yeah. face. Because, like, you buy these shoes and then yeah. you're going to burn them. You're, you're, you're still you're, paying you're, Nike. You're the one losing, my friend. <laughs> it's so dumb. You're, but people, you're down one pair of shoes. People are like, in protest of Nike's ad, I'm going to burn my Nike shoes. Oh my and then God. one guy burnt them while they're on his feet <laughs> and then he there's a picture of him in the hospital because his feet are burnt are up i'm not kidding like people are dumb they are so dumb they don't understand like why are you protesting that's a joke to me please tell me why you're protesting that's you're protesting because this is a black guy that's a who's making it yeah like exactly. it's ridiculous exactly this is like uh, and this is why i like also like i immediately when this came up and i just like read this just now um an article that came out on the guardian not too long ago that said that sales surged 31% in 
in days after the, the Kaepernick ad went live, which is great to mm-hmm. hear, which is kind of cool that people are reacting relatively well, right? Yeah. So, but it remind, reminded me of a cosmetol- sorry, Cosmopolitan uh, cover that came out recently featuring um, a plus-size model who is kind of famous on YouTube. Like, I've seen her or in and around. Okay. Um, and she's a 22-size plus model. And uh, she was put on the cover and obviously same kind of reaction of like people who are obviously kind of younger and oh. it, you know we're so happy we're so proud of her whatever you're changing the mm-hmm. standard for beauty all this stuff and mm-hmm. then there's people like you know Piers Morgan do you remember him oh I hate he's, Piers Morgan he's, he, and I think he's a Trump supporter now too I think he's uh, a Republican I'm pretty sure he is yeah, so he <laughs> he was he obviously tweeted out like this is like um, you know it, this is so shameful this is just the same as putting an anorexic woman on a cover like what this is, yeah uh, basically um, implying that if you put someone a, a plus size like that's gonna make everyone think that you know like that they have to change their bodies to look like that essentially which i'm like <laughs> and <laughs> what <laughs> exactly and i saw like you know Russell not showing like skinny tall people oh yeah, like exactly. what come on exactly. she, he's like you know basically don't show body extremes on covers like why are we doing this such a bad influence you, to well, women. they've been doing that for years upon years i don't understand what you're talking about so <laughs> anywho it's in like it's, and it frustrated me and i've found like um russell brand does like kind of coverage on internet oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff yeah, yeah he yeah. has a great youtube channel and basically his reaction was like it's not like women are gonna see you know covers like that and then go out and buy like a tub of ice cream right like you know it's just <laughs> it's just not gonna that's not the the intent of putting a woman like that on the cover it's yeah. so that if you happen to have a body that looks like that or reminds you of your own body yeah you're better able to embrace yourself like that's it period yeah exactly and i think that i i honestly don't understand why well i i understand but like it still baffles my mind that body image is such is still such an issue yeah when we i we've been speaking about this since we were yeah very young yeah like this has been an issue that's been constant yeah and, like, when we, I think when we were really young, it was really, like, really skinny body types, yeah, if yes. you remember. Yes, like when we were young, it's, like, very skinny, yeah. very tall, everything yeah. skinny, no thigh no gap, curves, no, no curves, hips, nothing. Period. Yeah. But now it's more of, like, slimmer butts. waist, big butt, big boobs, you know, like, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so definitely that's kind of changed, but it's still the fact that you're still a little, you're still slimmer. Yeah. So if you're bigger, um, you're kind of, like... For some people, some people don't realize that bigger people doesn't always mean they're unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Some people's body types are just they're bigger. Just curvier, yeah. They're just curvier. They're just bigger. So I understand that, yes, if you have health issues, then you need to address that. Mm-hmm. But just because you're bigger and doesn't mean you're unhealthy. Like you shouldn't yeah. feel that way. And yeah. so we have to have representation. Just like we have to have a representation of different people of color exactly. in media, we need to have representation of different types of bodies. Like mm-hmm. it's pl- point blank. Like exactly. <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. No, and I think like the intent keeps getting lost of like the whole point is to show variety of body types, right? So people yeah. can better identify. And I think too, the other thing that I kind of went back to in my head of like, why are we still allowing companies like cosmopolitan like vogue and whatever these big media monsters to dictate what we think beauty looks like yeah exactly like, that should just be you right and you being comfortable with whatever your body looks like yeah so, i mean again, that's a so lot easier said than done yeah no no for sure but I'm, I'm just saying like we still give the responsibility to media outlets like mm-hmm. vogue and like cosmopolitan to make those decisions for us you know what i'm saying yeah exactly like like great that they used a plus size model to mm-hmm. put you know, on their covers and whatever. And I'm sure that they had, like, a financial alternative motive there in making sales and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, let's not forget that. Yeah. But when we say, like, oh, you know, you know, good job, and I'm so proud of Vogue and whatever for making those decisions, it's like... Well, it, but they, yeah. But they shouldn't be dictating Just because beauty, Vogue does you know it... You know what I'm saying? Like, like, just because Vogue does it doesn't make it, you know, now it's now it's the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it should have always yeah, been that exactly, way. Exactly, it's exactly. Just, they shouldn't dictate what we think of that. But... Yeah, but at the same um, time, it is important that they do show different types of bodies because yeah. at the end of the day, they're still huge yeah. and they influence a yeah. lot of people's exactly. uh, views on fashion and uh, and beauty. So... No, for sure. It's still definitely important. But yeah, yeah we, we can't forget that it's definitely trendy to be woke right now. Yeah. So, yeah. as much as we yeah. applaud yeah. Um, big corporations for making these choices like don't forget that they want your money yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's why they're doing it they Come want on. your money they're, make, they're not making these decisions yeah they're goodwill necessarily yeah okie dokie but yeah no i mean i think but we we've 
come out of a de- definitely a better place than we were before. Yeah. Of just seeing really one restrictive view of what mm-hmm. a, a, a certain body should look like. But we still you... got ways to go. <laughs> exactly. Um, did you have an, a plan to go to TIFF soon? Or have you seen like the stuff that's been screening recently? I Until... honestly, I knew TIFF was coming, but I forgot. <laughs> they forgot that to, it like... was here. <laughs> no, you know what? Like I actually um, volunteered for TIFF twice. Yeah, I remember that. And when I did, it was a great experience. Like, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't about seeing all the actors and actresses and all the celebrities who come, excuse me, to, like, to the showings and stuff like that. For me, it was more like the atmosphere of uh, TIFF itself and, like, being able to see all these cool screenings and stuff like that. So, I wouldn't say that I saw a lot of celebrities. Mm -hmm. I think I saw a couple, I can't even remember, to be honest, a couple years ago. But, like, just seeing the films and stuff like that was... I loved it so much. It was great. So, but like the past couple of years, I haven't been able to go because it's in the first week of September or the second week of September. And like, I'm working. Exactly. <laughs> I don't have time to go yeah, anywhere. Exactly. I can't go downtown quickly to go see a, a screening. Yeah, it's like, basically why I haven't been able to go the previous years too because it's usually in and around when school starts. Yeah, exactly. It's, not it's the so time. difficult. <laughs> yeah, I just I was like so excited to read So, um, to but there was this one. Um, Did you want yours? Oh, thank you. Sorry. It was, there was this one. Um, film that i saw the trailer for um and it's by a nigerian uh director a woman Mm. female director um and it's basically about this uh from what i got from the the trailer if i'm remembering correctly Mm. it's about this woman it's it's a nigerian like nigerian cast um about this woman uh who works i think it's for her dad's company okay and her dad gets sick and um she's been like right alongside with her dad she knows the ins and outs of the business you know she's she knows everything about the business you know she really wants to lead the company stuff like that but when her dad gets sick he gives the lead role to her uncle who doesn't oh. know really know anything about the mm. the company and she's like obviously really upset like why am i not yeah, exactly. so she has to kind of work alongside her uncle who has like different views of how the business should run and it looked really interesting and i really want to see it. and i love that it's like an all nigerian cast and you're kind of um exposed to a different um cat like a different talent group you know mm-hmm. what i mean because usually what we see in in um exactly. mainstream hollywood the uh movies is not that exactly. so it was nice to see that and i know it's it's the first showing of it is at tiff so mm. i don't know if i'll be able to see it but i do want to see it yeah exactly. <laughs> i can't remember what it's called you know mine is same with like the, the movie that i have in mind that i think a co-worker of mine went to go see um and I wasn't able to reach because I think it was like nine o'clock at night. And by the time oh. you come back home, you know, like it, it was way too late for me. But basically, it was like about um, Kurdish women in Iran who are part of the military there. Mm-hmm. And like in in and it, I think it's set not in current time. It's in like previous Iran, like yeah. I think during the revolution and whatever. Um, but it's really interesting to, for me because I I know like my limited understanding of. Um, the Kurdish struggle within Turkey is very limited, but I understand it to be kind of um, a similar genocide, I guess, to like Palestinians in in um, well Palestine, right, in Israel. Um, but it, yeah, it's interesting to me because it's like outside of Turkey, and it, then you're also conflicting it with what's happening in Iran at the time. Like, there's just so much like oh. topics, and then women, like, so it, it's it's such a layered conversation yeah. of for a movie and yeah um it seems w- women-centric and i don't think that there's like and i'm not sure if the director herself is a woman but i know there's a lot of uh women being featured at this year's stuff i think it was 22 female directors oh nice like, it was a good amount um i so, love that yeah which is crazy and good for them for doing that and that i'm happy to hear that many women are actually yeah um, taking on films and stuff and are taking those roles which is crazy um but yeah, so I really wanted to see that just because that topic is like, I have so much to learn within that little realm. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's actually a, a movie last year, I, I, like about, it was like a rom-com from Saudi Arabia. Oh! I really wanted to see it. Oh so, my god. I'm so angry that I didn't go see it because it was like basically a young like Arab couple and they, they look like you would, like they were wearing the traditional yeah. outfits and everything. And they meet each other through social media, I think. And it's supposed to be a rom-com that discusses like what it's like to find a relationship yeah. in that atmosphere within also the social media mm-hmm. realm like what that's like and it looked really funny and it was a uh, like the way that it was shot it was a little artsy so it was t- definitely taking chances and oh. the fact that it came out of Saudi Arabia I'm like, yeah oh, that's, that's interesting tiff. like I remember like just reading and reading and reading about it because I was obsessed but 
Hopefully, I can find it online. <laughs> now that it's oh been my like god, let year. me know if you find it because yeah, I sure. want to see that. Yeah, amazing, right? Because like it's like... just funny because I just remember from the remember that time that guy who was too good looking, so they banned him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the one with like the really pretty eyes. Like, the yeah, one actually on Tumblr, like how do you really ban good. someone from Saudi Arabia because he's too good looking? Come on! <laughs> oh my god! No, I really want to see. There's a lot of movies that, that come out once in a while, and Tiff that I really want to see. Um, yeah, but I don't know. It, it, it feels stupid that it's this convenient. Like it's this. It's downtown. And I could go. Right yeah, here. we're so close, but, but honestly, the are hard to get to though actually yeah you have to if definitely if especially if it's like a movie with a lot of big actors and oh, actresses man. like yeah. you really need to go in advance to grab a ticket exactly. but i love tiff like just the mm-hmm. atmosphere in general the things going on like down king street and all that stuff it's really nice i wish i can go volunteer again yeah hopefully next year maybe oh my god um we should look into that to see if there's any other tickets or even at least for that movie that i just mentioned yeah so we'll take a look at that because that's really cool but yeah i think if you're good oh wow yep yeah. We should be good so with that. we <laughs> we're still struggling with our time, obviously, because we yeah. love to talk. But yeah, um, yeah well, I think we're gonna close here. Yeah. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't forget we're on Instagram at Talkaholics Pod, yep. and on YouTube, YouTube and SoundCloud is where you can find our stuff, which obviously you found if you're listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> and um, shoot us any questions at TalkaholicsPod at gmail dot com, um, and. Leave a comment. Yeah. Again, and, and I, I know we say it at every single podcast since we've started, but we're more than happy to hear from you about what you like so far about the podcast and what you want to hear from us going forward. But this is the ninth podcast. so Yeah, so definitely look out for the 10th, as we said earlier, because we're going to be doing some fun stuff in that episode. Okay. Um, so we'll... we'll I was going to say we'll see you on the next you one. Always, I always say that. Yourself. I'm sorry. We <laughs> will speak to you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.